Hey folks, thanks again for tuning in to Day at the Dude Ranch. It's uh, Captain James Nelson here of Dude Craft Guitars. And of course, I've got to adjust this thing a little bit. There we go, look at that. Haven't worn the apron a lot lately. It has been hot around here. I'm not kidding, I mean, it's crazy. Um, and we're hot with getting stuff done. So let me show you what we've got that we're working on and then show you what this episode's really gonna focus on and then um, what you could expect in future episodes because it's gonna be pretty cool. So this one we have, this is all swamp ash. This is a single piece of swamp ash and this is going to be a baritone. This is my uh, B6, or oh, actually it's not mine. won't be mine here pretty soon it's going out the door uh, as soon as we get the pickups still wait for pickups uh, but this thing's going to be ready and should be assembled by the end of the next week so yeah it's going to be beautiful that's the neck for it i've got it all sanded haven't got the neck oiled but that's that's the only thing stopping me there the sanding part is all done at least we think right it always seems like uh, you know you think your sanding is all done nice and clean and ready then that you get that first layer and you start seeing what I call cat hairs it's just the, the scratches that go the wrong direction so then you got to clean it up but that's that's what happened here with this one yesterday and I was still able to get it to this level after dinner so this has basically got the uh, first couple coats on it and uh, you know I could touch it so that's how hot it's been here now I'm gonna get that thing going um, with a couple more coats and then bring it up to just a nice you know semi semi glossy sheen for the customer so that's one thing that's down let me just set that over here and these are the other ones that are going so here's another b6 and these uh, everybody's got a little bit different uh, requirements as far as their scale lengths that they want this is a b6.2 that one I think is getting painted. That's poplar. Beautiful piece of poplar. And then uh, this one, this one we're getting a natural finish on it. So it's another B6. So that's that's all stuff that's got to get going. And this one, this one stick around. This is what I'm going to show you on this one. Now this is an interesting something different i have been making quite a few conversion necks lately i've got a couple that are getting sprayed today and uh this one however i think i started doing the frets but i didn't finish them so i'm going to finish out the fret job and then i'm going to polish the frets and then it's ready to get in a box but what's interesting about it is this has no seal or anything on it um this is the customer wants it raw and uh, so it's sanded to I think 400 and he's going to take it from there so the it what makes it interesting is usually I don't do all the polishing uh, stuff on the frets until after I've got all the finish done on the neck so this one is going to take a lot of tape I'm gonna have to tape everything all up just get it all nice and uh, cleaned up so that I don't get any polish. The last thing you want is get polish on the raw wood because whatever finishing he's going to do to it later, it's gonna be a, a real burden to him. So I wanna make it as easy on him as I can and just make it just nice and ready. So that's what we're gonna be doing um, in live mode. I'm gonna be uh, showing you how I go about finishing the frets out and polishing them. So uh, just put that aside for now. Show you uh, something really quickly here. So we're going to run to B-roll again. I'll show you what I did with this one. This is, uh, this is a little black Lemba thing. But it was really cool. And I'll just let, let the narrator take it from here. Check it out. So my buddy Gary uh, won a contest. He got a brand new Rikon tabletop 9.5-inch uh, bandsaw, which means I got his old Craftsman. It's a pretty cool little unit. Um, it did need some work. Uh, his tires were abandoned for a while, so they kind of rotted away. So I put new tires on the wheels. I got these nice little orange silicone ones. And uh, what makes it really nice is that I can keep the smaller blade on this one while I've got the resaw blade on my big one. So it's always cool having an extra tool. As you can see, it's got its limitations, you know, being only a nine and a half inch throat here. Uh, can't quite swing the body around like I do on my 14 inch but 
you know, you work around limitations once you learn what they are and, and you make it work. Again, it's always nice to have an extra tool around, and uh, this one may sit in the shed, you know, in between usages. Well, as you could know, I've always got a small shop here, so uh, I doubt I'll have it out all the time, but it's neat to pull out when I need it, and uh, look what it does to this limba. It just really trims it up really nice, gives me that good rough cut that I can go back and uh, clean up later. It's just cool. So thanks again, Gary. I really appreciate it. Hey, that was pretty cool, huh? You know, it's always nice having having new tools, even when they're old tools, and even when they're tools that you probably won't use a lot of. It's just nice having a, a little variant. So uh, it, it has come in handy because uh, my bandsaw, which is messy over there right now, but uh, yeah, it has a... Uh, it has a blade that's just set up just so well right now for resawing, and I'm trying to do all the resawing. You saw how, you know, I've got this and, and this one was a resaw drop top. So I'm trying to get uh, look through my list and see how many more various uh, woods that I've got coming up, so that I'll just do them. I'll just get them all done. And uh, I did get uh, new uh, tires for the wheels on that saw, so. I'll be changing those out, but before I do anything with that blade, I mean, it takes probably for me about 40, 45 minutes um, just to get get it all dialed in. You know, maybe I'll do an episode on that, show you how I go about it. But your best bet, check out. The, I'll leave a link. There's there's some really good uh, guys who really know what they're doing. Yeah, so uh, I just follow them, and their suggestions work. Here's another cool suggestion that uh, check this out now these are my files and my rasp and you know when you're working with a lot of various woods and you got finishes and things that you're doing with uh, files and rasp they tend to get gunked up and then they're not effective and so it's good to clean them every once in a while and I've learned that just a, a different set of brushes. That's a harder brush, and here's a softer one. But let them soak a little bit in uh, petroleum products, uh, petroleum base. This happens to be mineral spirits. It works pretty good. The main thing to remember is if you have something like this, it could be flammable. So don't leave it out too long and not next to a heat source. But look at that. That came out really... I mean, I should have done a shot with the before so you could see the after but I could see and I could tell you especially these fine files oh they're just they're gorgeous anyway um uh, so there's that you can tell I haven't done an episode of day at the dude ranch in a while because I kind of got away um you know following along on builds it takes a lot of setup and it takes a uh, longer to do the build and I've got a lot of builds so I'm trying to get caught up and I think I am. I think I'm getting to the point where I'm, I'm getting caught up pretty well. I do have my uh, wonderful daughter Lydia helping out, and she's getting caught up on a lot of the stock and uh, stuff that we've had, unfinished projects that we've had laying around. She's helping out a lot with that. So check that out. Uh, you probably saw this Instagram post that I did. Yeah, what a cool kid. So. This is the one you're going to want to watch. This is going to be really cool. Now, I uh, a trace a guitar that a friend of a friend of mine has. He's a jazz player, and he wants a nylon solid body. So it's not going to be semi-hollow. It's not even going to be chambered. It, he wants solid body, but he wants nylon classical type strings, and he plays jazz on it. So this is going to be really cool, because I did something even... I'm going to do something even off the wall for me. This is why I think you want to follow along because I'm learning. And so you're going to watch me learn how to do this. I know there's a lot of guys who have done these before. Um, they've done just solid single wood guitars. Um, I haven't, so that's going to be cool. Now, when I say solid single, it's actually going to be more like... Um, it's not just going to be out of one tree. I'm going to, there's going to be laminated pieces of wood, 
but what I'm going to do, how I'm going to do it, I'm going to carve the whole thing all in one. So that's going to be the part you're going to watch. So this is the template I made. And as you can see, I got some cleaning up to do. So I'm going to clean it up and I'll probably even shim it up in some spots because uh, this was from a six string uh, standard electric guitar. What I'm going to do is widen it up a little bit for the, the nylon strings because we'll want, I think, about 54, maybe 55 millimeters on the nut where the typical guitar is going to be 48 to 50. And so we're going to go a little bit wider on that. And so I'm going to basically add a little MDF to this and make it all clean. Get, get all the lines straight. It's going to have the slotted headstock. So I'm going to widen that up and make that uh, better. But we're going to work all off this template. So basically I'm going to make the wood, the plank, the chunk, whatever you want to call it. And then I'm going to set this down on it. Trace it, bandsaw, router, you know, all that jazz to make it really cool so you're going to get to get to see the whole process here i'm going to i'm going to start from the wood planking everything so we're going to go through the whole process of how we're going to make this one so this is going to be the next series in the day at the dude ranch series of building guitar so that's what you're going to want to tune in for i appreciate you guys tuning into this one and uh i promised you some uh, fret polishing so let's get to that if for whatever reason you don't want to watch the fret polishing Please fast forward to the end. I got some really cool stuff for you to check out. All right, thank you. Finally, eh? All right, so let me show you what I like to use for polish. I like to use a couple different products. One, Brasso. Brasso is really good for hand polishing. And I'll show you how I'm gonna do that. And for that, I usually like some type of little scrubber pad. Try to get as you can isolated to the metal and steer away from getting it all over the fretboard like I just did. But anyway, on this, it's real easy. Just take that and just rub it really good and get a pretty decent shine, you know, by hand. And you can get it really smooth. It may not be, you know, museum high polish look, but you can get it pretty smooth. And that's really what you're looking for with, with fret polishing. Fret polishing is not about trying to blind your audience when you're on stage and uh, the lights hit your frets. It's about making it smooth so when you play a note, and especially when you bend a note, you don't get that sound. You actually just get a nice clarity off the strings. And that's what you're really wanting. Now, again, because uh, I've got to do X number of these in a day, a week, etc., what I like to use is this stuff here, it's, and there's various different brands, uh, Chemical Guys, they've got a shop right down the road from me, so it's real easy to go in there, talk to them, and uh, get what it, what works for me. And for this stuff, I'll be a little, uh, I'll be a little more free with it, because it does not damage the, the wood, especially the ebony, and like I said, if this wasn't ebony, I would have it all taped up anyway. But I'm going to just get it on there very liberally just get it really on there really well and I'm going to take the pad without being connected to the spinner and I'm just going to rub on it a little bit now remember we all those scratch marks we got on that fretboard up to that 1200 level those are almost going to disappear just almost perfectly disappear by the time you get strings on it it will be as close enough to disappearing as we need it to be i'm going to rub some more on that back on and basically i'm just making sure that this doesn't splatter all the way now you notice i am wearing an apron even though i did complain about how hot it is and i'm wearing an old apron that uh, has obviously seen some action now this gets really noisy for myself, I'm going to be wearing headphones. Am I shouting? All right, here we go.
All right, there you have it. I turned off the compressor because I don't need it to reload at this time. Um, look how shiny that is. Now there's still a little bit of uh, residue product. Product residue? There's a little left. I'm just going to wipe it off with a paper towel. And look at that. Whoa! Oh, yeah. Now, see, like I said, because this stuff is made by auto detailers, it's made so that when you're polishing the chrome uh, bits on a guitar, it's, this is light metal polish. So it actually is also safe on the urethanes and varnishes, and that's why I can go right over the fretboard with it, which is what I like about it. So you see it actually buffed out all the shine in the fretboard at the same time as polishing the frets. Now you probably notice me work a little spot right here. Looks like I got a little little Goomba that didn't get taken care of. So I'll just come back and touch that up by you know by hand and uh, like I got a little rough spot right there. I think it's just a little excess glue that I didn't get wiped off in time. So I'll fix that one up. Probably just use a razor blade. Heck, let's do it now. Where'd I put my razor blade? Here it is. So I'll just come by with a little couple scrapes with the blade. Oh, piece of cake. Yeah, done. Okay, and then hit that with a little more polish. It's so easy. And that's it. Let's hit this real quickly with this guy. Beauty, you say? So that's it guys, as you can see there's not much more to it than that, uh, pretty easy. Of course, you know, you want your frets to be done, you want them to be level and uh, and the fretboard all ready to go, all the, all the ends real nicely done, good feeling. And uh, that's it, you know, buff it out, polish it out, and rock it on. So Jumbo, once I get the tape off of this thing, I'm, I'm going to break for lunch here. But uh, after lunch, I'm going to get my hands all nice and cleaned up again. I'll get the tape off of this thing, get it in a box and ready for you, my friend. And uh, yeah, then you could go ahead and finish it out and cut out that headstock the way you like. And uh, there you have it. So thanks again, folks, for tuning in to Dude Craft Guitars. I told you there'd be something special at the end of this. So I told you guys to, if you didn't want to watch this segment, to go ahead and fast forward. So for those of you who did, this is it merchandise that's right we've been uh, getting requests from folks all over have been asking hey we want to support dude craft guitars but we don't play guitar <laughs> you know we, we like what you're doing but we don't play guitar don't want a guitar i'm not going to spend so much money on something i'm not going to play hey i totally get that but can you do you know 20 30 40 bucks maybe to uh get a t-shirt a sweatshirt we got some hoodies coming we got t-shirts coming check out um, you will be having a merchandise uh, section on this page as well as of course uh, eventually on our website so for those of you who want to support uh, please if you're not already a subscriber hit the subscribe button ring the bell that way you'll know when we actually do make the announcement that we have merchandise ready because uh, it's ordered it's just a matter of getting in here so once it gets here we'll we'll let you know all right thanks again everybody who's been helping out and supporting dude craft guitars in any way that you have been i appreciate it every little bit goes a long way and remember the more we grow the more you know all right and the more we show or something like that I, you know i gotta come up with a good mantra i don't know I, i'll come up with something all right leave comments let me know thanks again